Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's my honor to be taking part in Singapore Spine Society. I would like to share my screen today. We'll be discussing about bipolar and back spine surgery, and uh, we'll be discussing in particular the compression. This is my disclosure, and this is my credits to my mentors. They are from South Korea, who I learned both unipotal and bipolar and back spine surgery. We'll try to cover the history of uh, and also back spine surgery, in particular bipolar and uh, label the differences between bipotal and unipotal endoscopy, as well as to highlight the main differences uh, between the FAS and UBE, and discuss the surgery in brief and uh, the literature. Once upon a time uh, in the 1980s and the early 2000s, uh, endoscopy started out with being mainly in transformational area. Uh, we will visualize with the endoscope and perform using working channel through the transformational area and do discectomy. Subsequently, in the 2000s, it has been evolved, evolved into uh, an interlaminar as well as paraspinal approaches to endoscopy. And uh, spinal stenosis, cervical and thoracic application in the late 2010s. And now we have applied uh, uh, interbody fusion as a fourth generation endoscopy. The challenge in unipotal endoscopy is that uh, we have different degrees, different length, as well as different approaches, uh, as we need to dock and work around the dock area with some exceptions. So each of them have its specific instruments and learning curve, hence uh, it is a steep learning curve for users, and uh, we, which with specific instruments that cannot be used for other types of spine surgery. At the same time, in the 2010, the South Korean neurosurgeon developed UBE, and in 2014, the orthopedic surgeon developed BES. Uh, BES involved mainly using, uh, 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 mainly using osteotomy, and uh, the UBE mainly using drill as well as other spinal instruments. Uh, Soliman uh, from the Middle East described the irrigation endoscopic decompression, which is similar to that of the UBE and BES system. And basically using arthroscope triangulation and uh, spinal instruments and managed to do the compression was published in the Spine Journal. It's one of the earlier publications. And uh, the good thing about bipolar surgery is that we can use the same uh, position and apply it to all levels of spine from cervical to lumbar and perform decompression discectomy as well as fusion that across all levels using pretty much similar position of the left hand with non-dominant hand holding the scope and the dominant hand holding working instrument to a different separate parts. The benefits is uh, less invasiveness, less pain, less bleeding, uh, and uh, irrigation surgery li limiting the infection rate, having good panoramic view uh, rather than a more zoom in view in unipotal surgery uh, with uh, unlimited working space because of the difference uh, of uh, left hand or non-dominant hand holding the scope and the right hand holding working instrument. This magnified view also at the same time allow easier differentiation of separate uh, tissues and structures. And we can use ordinary spine instrument, as you can see here, uh, normal spine curette, as well as a nerve hook can be used in the surgery. The benefits to the surgeon is that uh, we also are familiar in our training in an, as an arthroscopic surgeon in orthopedic to uh, in shoulder and knee and can be ex ex extrapolated to spine do the same triangulation. This upright posture allow us to prevent a degenerative condition of our own spine. Ergonomic visualization can be enhanced by the scope and TV size. Yeah, as our vision gets poorer over the years, we can have a bigger TV as well as a, a nicer um, high, high definition scope, for example. We can engage our assistant to retract and help out the osteotomy. And then, uh, we can we are familiar with the instrument naturally because they are modified strong spine instrument, and many of them are also uh, ordinary spine instrument can be used. Uh, such strong magnification, high magnification up to 33 times, 0.5 times allow us to differentiate the favorite tissue plane. Uh, however, because of the difference between the uh, visualizing endoscope port as well as the outer working instrument port, if there's a bleeding, uh, it tends to be a little bit more difficult control. However, with uh, uh, good uh, hemostasis uh, techniques as well as uh, experience. Uh, once it gets under control, you can see that uh, the visualization improves and we can uh, work better uh, with the instruments. The main differences that I've highlighted is mainly the use of osteotomy or drill and in terms of pads and UBE. Otherwise, pretty similar. 
uh, in terms of the skin incision, best incision, uh, mainly in the interlaminar space or the UBE uh, 1.5 cm away from the spinal laminar junction. I have done on uh, both types of surgery and I personally find that there's no difference in terms of outcome. It's really your comfort level. So as you can see, the best portal on the left side is mainly in the interlaminar space. On the right side, we can do it a little bit lower so that we can uh, stack less bone as we get across the contralateral side from the working port. And this is UBE portal. Again, uh, it is mainly based on spinal laminar junction and measuring 1.5 cm of it. Uh, we tend to shift a little bit lower in the right side. And uh, as I did a concept that explain why right side needs to be a bit lower so that uh, as we get the working instrument in, it won't be blocked by the proximal SP base. And uh, we tend to need to reset the last instrument if the, uh, both of the ports are slightly lower in the interlaminar space. So there's also a difference in the left and right view. I'll go through that in the next time we discuss uh, by portoscope. So in uh, in PES, uh, by portal surgery, is triangulation. You can see the instruments come at a different angle as the viewing endoscope. You can also see first before you perform your instruments. Uh, and you can use a large optophone like this to take out the inferior articular process. While in UBE, uh, in UBE, there's more drilling and the best we use uh, more osteotomy as you can see from here. So uh, recently there are more uh, academic activities and uh, literature research on UBE, as you can see over the next uh, over the past few years. And uh, the few leading um, articles shows that, that it is a good alternative to uh, uh, uniportal as well as that of the minimally invasive tubular surgery. It shows uh, it has uh, Variable mean operative time, uh, preservation of facet joint with a uh, uh, good early post operative pain relief, and uh, no long term differences in terms of uh, the three types of surgery. And more importantly, uh, you can preserve the facet angle. So, overall, um, for the both BAS and microscopic and uniportal in different uh, experience hands produce good clinical outcome. Uh, best and uniportal might have a little bit better uh, post-operative pain relief and, uh, um, and um, it preserves more facet joint as a result of the minimal, uh, visual, better visualization of the tissues. The um, main complications are in the learning curve period, uh, there may be more likely causes of uh, complications in the first 20 cases or so. Uh, which involve mainly the death of the dura tear, as well as that uh, of sometimes uh, neck pain, hippos of headache, as well as hematoma formation. In my own personal experience, I mainly have only dura tear in my series. However, I've seen a water-based irrigation, um, neck pain and headache in uh, my time in Korea. I also uh, heard from Dr. DJ Choi in his early 2010s. Uh, the wrong radio frequency ablation setting can cause effects similar to ECT, can lead to cardiac uh, and um, CNS issues. So it is important to use a uh, uh, good pressure for mean of 30 to save for cervical, uh, preventing neck pain and headache. And um, we have to apply the correct uh, electrical radio frequency. Uh, basically, we use the higher radio frequency uh, in uh, orthopedic uh, limb surgery. So uh, currently, after various uh, invention and innovation, the Koreans have come up with a formula of using a high uh, radio frequency energy and a low radio frequency energy. The high energy is used uh, near also to the flavum on the soft tissue at the lamina, while the low energy is used uh, in near the dura structures. So as you can see here, if you perform using uh, by portal using the limb arthroscopic uh, energy system, it's like doing ECT to the brain. It can cause uh, a patient to wake up to pulse, and uh, it can be quite uh, an anxious for the patients and surgeon after surgery because the patient's not responding well in terms of the CNS uh, uh, alertness. So uh, you can see here we use a low energy about 10 to 40 watts rather than that of the high. Uh, what's used in um, the system in uh, arthroscopy. So uh, the Korean uh, came up with a system that can typically design for spine, and uh, this is what I use. And the Dura-Tear, uh, this is a 
paper that uh, I, I republished, like uh, Amanda and I talking about using the tackle seal patch technique to repair you know, various uh, size of dura damages. Of course, we can convert to open as well as dura tear. Uh, in bipartal, we can also use uh, non penetrating vascular clips to repair, as well as using sutures using Ewan's technique and uh, the other inlay and onlay technique for dura repair. Uh, basically, just to show this is the setup, we make portals, we create a sub pressure working space, sub laminar working space, a superficial flatectomy, laminotomy, we the, uh, the SAPIAP, uh, and um, uh, do a distal laminotomy and the distal flavor resection. In most cases, we try nerve root discectomy. These are very similar to that of microscopic surgery, and it, my setup is very similar to the, my mentors that hand, non dominant hand scope and uh, dominant hand. Holding our embryo or atro and uh, working instruments is uh, we have uh, we have the best set available in Singapore uh, and then um, we 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 use a waterproof NSK drill as well as a gel feed system and uh, we can have a swess uh, dam for water output. So generally, um, this is what we have in terms of the systems. This is a local case example. Uh, we done it recently. Um, this patient has a severe spinal stenosis. Claudication distance is. Time is 10 minutes, and uh, feeling numbness after 10 minutes in the buttock, severe stenosis, can almost can't see the spinal cord. And uh, we, we started out with uh, using the uh, high energy radio frequency ablator, uh, soft, soft tissue dissection, they uh, find out uh, where is the spinal laminar junction, perform the proximal laminotomy using the uh, drill. And uh, then we work on the distal laminotomy to create uh, enough uh, working space for the interlaminar window. Uh, once we have created the working, enough working space and left off the superficial flavum, we can get to the contralateral side. I like to do the contralateral side first before really taking out the ligamental flavum. Once we have done the uh, laminotomy on the contralateral side, then I start taking out the flavum. Uh, this is the ipsilateral flavum with the dura exposed. And then you can see the contralateral uh, flavum is removed by. Uh, using the kerosene ranger and uh, we can see that uh, we can look at the contralateral side and do the um, um, de decompression on the contralateral side as well Cut the, so now we're exposing the caudal aspects of the flavum performing hemostasis we do the decompression and then finally we can visualize the um the traversing and exiting the roots we need the traversing the as well as that of the of the um uh, it's the and control lateral side. Finally, resecting the facet joint. We really don't need to reserve a lot. We reset a lot of facet joint. We just reset enough to see the proper signal fluid. Can get the uh, this patient mainly have the central canal stenosis. Uh, so we do do the enough the flavor resection and release. And uh, in the end, she had two, two small wounds. She's able to walk within a few hours of surgery and discharge the next day. Um, she's currently uh, one month out and now. Uh, has uh, no symptoms, no pain, uh, VS0 and ODI0. So in summary, uh, in the expert hands, uh, in the, if uh, whoever or spine surgeon will be interested in well, each of these techniques, uh, bipartal, uniportal, or microscopic tubular surgery, they're minimally invasive surgery in general, as long as we are comfortable with the technique and uh, we apply it in the correct patients with good indications, they produce good outcomes. Uh, it's not uh, easy to uh, really compare which technique is better. It's like talking about Taekwondo, Tai, uh, Judo, and Tai Chi. They are, each of them, if you master it well, uh, we master it well, you can perform uh, good techniques and a uh, good surgical outcome. Thank you very much.